On this episode of No Sleeping in the Trophy Room, I have a live conversation with fashion designer, philanthropist, and entrepreneur, my brother David Weeks. This Queens, New York native is widely known for his sold out pop-up shops around the country for his clothing line, Reeves Paris. In his early 20s, Dave created a million dollar clothing brand. David Weeks represents the New York state of mind, relentless passion, and the hustler spirit. Let's get into it. This is No Sleeping in the Trophy Room. go back and uh, I'm super excited and honored to have this conversation with you brother thank you so much yes sir man so Dave you know there's so many places we can start family um, and I want to start where it all started for you yeah. talk to me about coming up I know you represent that Jamaica Queens anybody yeah. in here from New York City anybody here from New York City Say you know what I'm saying word up word up you know what I'm saying <laughs> Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> so my brother David Weeks right here represents that Jamaica Queens. Yep. Dave, my first question for you, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. is how did coming up in Jamaica Queens, you know, shape your perspective on life? Um, just living there, there, a lot of people, it just looks limited when you come outside. It's like, ah, I'm limited to the J train. I'm limited to the E train. I'm limited to this. So, you know. It's like I always wanted to, I love Queens, but my main goal always was to get out of Queens. So I made sure I went to school an hour and 35 minutes away from my house. I went to school in Manhattan. Went to school in Manhattan every single day. Three trains, J to the E to the B, every morning. Yes, I was late for the, you know, the first period, you know what I'm saying? But that was Jim. We'd be all right. Well, first off, you are the youngest of nine. So you have nine brothers and sisters? Damn, how'd you know that? But Come yes. on, man. I'm doing my homework, hey, man. That's true. That's homework. true. That's true. My oldest brother over there, you know what I'm saying? Hey, shout out to the family in the building. Let's make some noise for David Weeks, the brother in the house, man. Brother Russ. What's that like? It's like sharing, sharing food, man. <laughs> nine people, man. Now Queen. y'all sharing clothes on this Reeves hey, NYC, man. Hey, man. Come on. Yeah. Believe that, believe that, believe that. It was a learning experience. I was fortunate enough to be the last child. And, you know, you get to see everybody kind of go through their things. So <laughs> it kind of teaches you, like, oh, he did that. Nah, I ain't doing that. <laughs> he did that. Nah, I ain't doing that. Oh, that worked for him? Okay, I'll do that. You kind of get the, like, error to, like, fuck up before you do it. Like, you, you, you know, watch other people mess up or watch other people prevail. And he's like, all right, I'll follow that. You know, I'll go, I'll go do that. Yeah, it's amazing, dude. I'm, yeah. I, I can relate. I'm, I'm the youngest child as well, so oh, yeah, yeah, um, youngest child. You know, it, it has its luxuries. It also doesn't. Right. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, man. So, you know, coming up in Queens, man. Who were some of the first people that you saw? You know, take it further than the block. Yeah, I don't know if they was from Queens though, but no, no. Word, uh, word. I, I do gotta say, shout out Jamaica Coliseum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out Jamaica Coliseum. I used to go there and they'd be heat pressing and doing all this stuff. And I just be like, man, this is like larger than life when I would go there. Like, how are y'all doing this? How y'all, y'all really making clothing right now? There's an older gentleman. He's probably about like 55. He's probably still in there. West Indian dude. His name is uh, Julian. And I used to go to him every day. He used to just teach me so much stuff. I used to have to pick all my stuff out of the decals by scrap, by my hand. It was a lot. But to see him do that, you know, and I never speak on that dude. I don't think I ever spoke about that. But to see him do that was like, yo, you could do some more stuff being from Queens. So shout out Julian. Yeah, that's amazing, dude. Yeah. I also read that you used to hit up castings to, to be an extra in movies to get some money yo. as well in high school. <laughs> hold on, hold on. You doing too much <laughs> digging now. Narwar. Nah, man, listen, there's, there's, there's all types of hustles. Yeah. But this was back in high school, man. I want nah, you to talk to me about nah, that. Nah, that's a fact. I definitely uh, hit up castings. I'm definitely walking past in your favorite movie somewhere from 06 and 05, <laughs> like just in the background, you know. I wanted to be an actor, you know, honestly. I wanted to be an actor, so I would do like a lot of casting. From the time I was like in eighth grade, ninth grade, you know, I was doing, I was doing them all. I was doing them all. I paid $10, $12, cool. And they got craft services. All right, but <laughs> that's good with me. That's, that's all I needed. So I would go there, no matter how far I was in Manhattan, I would go there every day before work, after work, whatever. In between school, I'll make it happen. I just wanted to be in movies. I love that, man. I think um, 
you know, there's a quote out there that says, you know, you got to do a million things until you make a million dollars. You know, you got to do a million things until you make a million dollars. Yeah. And um, I, I relate and I totally respect that, man. So when I, I didn't know that about you. I've known you for years. So yeah, I, I don't know how I, you knew that. Man, yeah, I don't remember yeah. telling no one that. It's all good. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, but yeah, dude, I want to I wanna fast forward to the beginning of you putting together garments, right? Yeah. So it's like you went from specialty items, yeah. snapbacks, glasses, yeah. you know, which evolved to, and you were how, how old at that time when you were putting together like the snapbacks? Like, eight, uh, 18. So you're 18, yeah. right? Yeah. You're 18 and you're putting together these specialty items and this evolves into a multi-million dollar brand called Embellish NYC. Uh, yeah, this is man true. is 20 years old, you know what I'm saying? For real. Um, talk to me, man, about just, you know, having a multi-million dollar brand at 20 years old and some of the things you learned. Some of the things I learned from uh, just making a lot of money at a young age and uh, also spending habits and also learning how to pay taxes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ding! Taxes, people. Pay, pay your taxes. Pay your, pay taxes, your taxes. Pay your street taxes. Pay your, your federal taxes. Pay your government tax. Pay every tax. Pay everybody, <laughs> or you gonna get Wesley Snipe. Straight up, man. <laughs> but uh, but no, I, th I think that's really important to share because uh, what people see on social media is just the highlights. Oh yeah, for you know sure. what I'm saying. So yeah. they only see David Weeks NYC at these at trade your, shows. At your up moments. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, there's obviously another side of the of the embellish um, uh -huh. NYC story oh, for sure, which, which leads me to um, to a quote that I, that I wanted to read from you. I do a little segment on No Sleeping in the Trophy Room called Tweets is Watching. You had a tweet March 15th, uh, 2021. You said, there's beauty in the struggle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Damn, I, wanna, wow, I, wrote that so I, I want to talk about the story with your Jordans. Yeah. How you had a dream about moving to Los Angeles. Tell me about that story. I mean, I always and Beauty to, in that struggle. Yeah, yeah. I, look, I always wanted to move to LA, like, always. Like I used to listen to a lot of LA music when I was younger, so I just I was like I know I'm gonna get there eventually. I don't know when, but I know I knew I was gonna get there. But uh, fortunately, let's see how I moved to LA. <laughs> I think I was 19 years old. Um, I was uh, running up the glasses way from Embellish in New York, and I was kind of like uh, French Montana's flunky. <laughs> I used to just like I did nothing, but I used to be in a studio. I met him. Uh, this, I met him because I used to, my favorite thing back in the day was I would b bombard people and anything that I can get my brand on. So I was at the source. I found out where their magazine was. I ran up there like, you got to put, remember the source? Yeah, <laughs> First of all. Source magazine, man. Yeah. Legendary hip hop magazine. Yep. I was like, you got to put my glasses in the source. And to me, that, that was all be all. Like, you know. So I was like, you got to put my glasses in the source. They eventually did, like a month later. But when I was walking out of the um, office, I ran into this dude, and he looked like, I didn't really know who he was. He looked like basic op from the corner store. I'm like, who is that? Like, you know, Diddy, you know, as you know, had a daddy's house. It was on the same floor. That was a studio. So right out of source was daddy's house. So I walked out of there. I ran into French. Uh, didn't know it was French. And he, uh, he's almost about to drop that song, 9,000 Watts. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, I make clothes, bro. And he's like, oh, word, word. I be needing some clothes. I'm like, all right, cool. So I give him like a, I go up there the next day. I'm just happy to be back in Manhattan. I go up there the next day. I give him a jacket. He's like, oh, this is fire. He wears it, uh, but he didn't wear it in the video, but he wore my glasses in the 9,000 Watts video. Rest in peace, Chink Drugs. But, Rest in uh, peace, Chink Drugs, man. But he wore, he, he wore the glasses there, and like they kind of exploded in my hood. What I would normally do to sell them was go to barbershop, the barbershop, the barbershop, the barbershop, and sell them to people and put it on uh, was it Facebook at that time. Put it on Facebook, try to go in buy, buying and selling uh, groups, try to sell it there, try to sell it there. And um, But once he wore it, it was like uh, now people in the barbershop was like, those are the ones French Montana had on? I'm like, yeah, yeah, those are the ones. It's all so, starting to make sense. Yeah, yeah. So I eventually uh, hung out with him for like a year until his debut album is now ready. And now he's popping. Pop that's out. He got my glasses in that video. Uh, everything's out already. And his album is starting to roll out. And I'm just there every single day doing nothing but like giving him free glasses and like, you know, telling jokes. <laughs> but, so I was there every day. Um, yeah, man, it's just like, he, he was kind of instrumental. <laughs> so your, your, your journey to L.A., like, 
I read that you had to sell your entire collection yeah. of Jordan ones. Yes, your, your, I, I your forgot highly, what you was talking about. <laughs> so, highly coveted collection of Jordan ones. Yeah, yeah, I had, a, um, I had a crazy collection of Jordan ones. Crazy at that time, being like 13. But, <laughs> but still, they were like 01s, 06s. So they was pretty dope. And um, like I said, I was around French a lot. So my, I, I just felt like I reached the peak. I was like, I can't get no hotter in New York. He wore them on the tour bus uh, photo, and which was like, that was major. Like, so now everybody on my block is like, oh, the glasses, the glasses, but I'm not making any more money. <laughs> like, it's the, I'm being cool, but I'm not making any more money. So Big I, difference. Yeah, there's a big difference between cool and money. Cool don't pay the bills. Remember that. But um, neither does that blue check on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go get verified at the bank, not right. verified yeah. on the gram. Go right? verified. That's a fact. That, that's a fact. So um, after like he wore it on that thing and it was cool, I'm like, I got to go somewhere. I always wanted to move to L.A. Literally, I kid you not, 14 days before I decided to go. Like I just before I actually left, I just found an apartment on Craigslist. Uh, I found a roommate who wasn't a psycho killer. Like, you know, he was cool. He was like, yo, man, I'll make you a Walmart run. I'm like, good, because I don't have a car. Like, so he was like grabbing stuff for me already. I just paid, um, so I sold all my Jordans to get out there. Word up. All of them. And that was a big sacrifice for me at that time, because that was the only thing I had. <laughs> like, for real, for real. Yeah, so it was like huge for me. I know, but I, I think that's a great story and very important to tell because you know, you have to bet on yourself. You know, Always. There, there's uh, there was something on the other side of what David was seeing, which was, you know, his dream. And obviously, you know, on the other side of the fence, the grass is greener in this case. That's a fact. Um, so, yeah, man. So I want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, how, how we met. So you're in L.A., you know, and that's that's where we started clicking. Yeah, facts. Originally. Um, I, I have a video here. I'm making a uh, vegan lunch bag challenge. I used to have this thing, lunch bag challenge, every uh, like every Sunday or every second Sunday. Me and my friends, I, I challenge other people to do it. Like, um, so basically, we'll feed 100 people, and then like I got the idea from the ACL challenge. A bunch of people were throwing water on top of their head for ACL. I'm like, Man, if y'all could do this, y'all can definitely feed some people as well. So I started challenging people. I would do it. And then I'll challenge four of my homies that just wasted a thousand dollars in the club. And then I'll challenge four, they challenge four of their homies that wasted a thousand dollars in the club. And just, you know, I wanted to keep it going like that. So we would document ourselves going out there at that time. Yeah. And, um, you know, and for me, it was an honor and a, and a privilege because I'm all about philanthropy and giving back yeah. um, and just representing real things for real. Um, so, you know, so we went down to Skid Row and, uh -huh. um, you know, we gave out some lunch bags. And we got a few tossed back at us by some non-vegan people. Ooh. They weren't. They weren't really. <laughs> I ain't gonna eat this shit. <laughs> Word up. But you know, but it was the intention. You know what I'm saying? The intention was pure. So you know, pure intentions yield pure results. And I want to talk about how that's evolved into just you know everything that you're doing when it comes to environment advocacy. Basically, I have an organization. Plastic is whack. Um, we're just trying to clean up the world from using plastic. People don't realize the effects that we it has on the earth. And it's like plastic has a huge effect on, on the water and water has a few, huge effect on the animals and animals have a huge effect on us living. So, you know, if you get rid of one, you get rid of all. So that's basically what it is. And, and this is the uh, the 10 foot uh, sculpture that he just unveiled. Yeah. Dave, talk to us a little bit about this sculpture right here. Let's clap some, yeah. let's clap it up for my brother. Right here. I ain't had enough claps, man. It took about... Took about a year to design this. No, it took two. It took two years <laughs> to design this. Yeah, yeah. I was working during the pandemic, man. Like uh, everybody was uh, chilling and catching ke checks and drinking Casamigos. Um, I was working on this, <laughs> like you know. Um, but this is the plastic wave. It's a ten-foot sculpture. Uh, it's made out of fiberglass and um, it's electro-plated on the outside. She's and it's dope. yeah. Thank you, bro. <laughs> so basically. Um, Everybody's familiar with this painting, but doesn't know the name of it. You ever heard of the, the Great Wave of Kanagawa? It's the Japanese painting that's in every, any office that you've ever been into. It's there. So basically, it's my interpretation on that. If I was to pull up one of those waves in modern day, it would be filled with plastic and bottles and stuff that we put in there, mm. you know? Because I, I, I try not to preach too hard. I just 
kind of try to tell everybody just less less in their <laughs> that's a bless you <laughs> i try to let lessen how much plastic you use because we're all human we're all going to use plastic everything's made out of plastic if you count it how many times you use plastic a day it probably come up to like 95 times you know what i'm saying so just just lessen it a little bit all right i won't use the water bottle this time i won't use this that time but yeah plastic is whack Nah, listen up, man. It's the intention. You know what I'm saying? Like the goal is to leave this place better than what it was where we got here. That's and fact. whether it's this room, whether it's this planet, it's the intention. You know what I'm saying? To leave That's it fact. better than what it was when we got here. I know I'm gonna be uh, better after I leave here. After hearing the amazing sounds that I heard tonight, the amazing oh, yeah, words yeah. that we're hearing tonight. So, you know, it's the intention, man. I, w- I want to move forward to this uh, to this Instagram post that you made. Oh, this is a photo of Fab Five Freddy. Oh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is also a photo of uh, Basquiat, Basquiat, Andy Warhol, Spike Lee. And the caption right here says, I live to create moments like this. Yes, Fab Five, crazy. Spike Lee, Basquiat, Warhol. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you are widely known for the bridging the gap. Yeah. Sk- uh, you know, the skateboard Skateboards. collaborations with, yeah. you know, just uh, high-end luxury labels. And, you know. In streetwear. Yeah, in streetwear, so yeah. That's, you know, that's what. That picture right there explains everything I worked for. I literally try to create moments like that. Yesterday, I tried to create a moment like that. I like there to be a Fortune 500 guy. I like there to be, you know, some hood dudes from Broward County. <laughs> like, I, I like that yeah. together because I was just telling this to my girlfriend last night, I swear. I was telling her, like, I like to have these people next to each other because they might not have never crossed paths before. But guess what? Here, you get a chance to cross paths. And you might find out that dude from Broward County can help you at your firm. You don't even know that. But y'all had a conversation that you probably would have never had had you not been there. Those men right there, they in all different fields. Like, come on. This is crazy. Like, this, nah, for real. Man, that is insane. And I think that, you know, it's, it's very important because um, my next question to you is, you know, do you feel a certain responsibility to extend the shelf life of hip hop? Do you feel a certain, you know, there's other ways that people get down where they water down their process? Yeah. Do you feel, you know, um, just the onus to, Got you to. know, stretch the shelf life? Got to, man. You know I'm I'm a, anybody know me, you know, I'm a hip hop purist. <laughs> like, Straight up. Yeah, it's, it's on. Shout out to Rock the Bells because we're about to do something soon. Hello. Yeah, I'm going to leave that out. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I'm a hip-hop purist, and I just I really love the art form. And, I, you know, just spread it as far as I can and, and kind of let people know. That's why I, I always play the sample game. I ask people all the time, like, where that sample from? They'd be like, oh, it's from him. It's like, no, that is actually, that's actually Cool Mo D. Like, you didn't know yeah, that, though, yeah. so I'm going to educate you. Yeah. So I always want people to know how far hip-hop reaches. Those ADM songs that's boom, 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 those come from hip-hop beats. Like, you know, like those come from hip hop beats. Yeah. Those come from 1984 in uh, Chicago. Like, you know, people don't know that stuff. People don't know that a lot of these genres were mixed in with hip hop. Like, you know, mm-hmm. we got all the scenes. Yeah, we got all the scenes, we got all, all the, the sauce. And, you know, hip hop is, is a trillion dollar industry. And it's at That's one point crazy. in time, there was lawsuits, you know, federal lawsuits brought up against hip hop artists, NWA. Yeah. And, you know, to see hip hop be, you know, just the, the, the global language um, and global business that it is now, um, you know, it's just amazing to hear that you go that far deep to preserve the cloth, to stretch yeah. the shelf life, to, got to. To, to just represent right, you know? Got to, got to. It's necessary. So, um, so, yeah, man. So, Dave, I feel like every time we talk, you are in another state, you are on a plane <laughs> somewhere, you're yeah, that's true. on another continent at times. Yes. How does David Weeks keep the balance what are some things that you subscribe to um you know to keep your mind and your body and your energy just kind of you know centered up man i initially uh started running because of you hello (laughs) let's go shout out to the no Uh sleeping running club shout out my man ed in the back no sleeping running club rosie in the house club is active then then i quit but (laughs) 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 but (laughs) but yeah no i still try but uh you know i kind of just um the thing is, like, I don't, you know, you could just, my people around me just keep me grounded. So it's like, I'll never, like, you don't fall into character too much. Like, oh, I'm David Weeks. Oh, I'm David Weeks NYC today, nigga. Like, so it's <laughs> like, you got to just know who you are. It's like, I know who I am. I'm aware of who I am. I'm, 
like I don't need embellishments to make me feel better. Mm. You know, I know who I am. I know my people love me. I know my family love me. I know my friends love me. So you know, I'm just, I'm alright if I want. Like you know, oh we ain't pop no bottles yesterday. That's okay. Like I'm still seen. I'm still heard. I'm always unseen. I was heard though. You I know. Love that. I love that man. So and just I'll, know who you are. You know, straight, straight really up. just having a deep understanding of your your purpose and your position in this world. And that's it, bro. That's right. Affirm yourself, people. Yeah. Don't wait for the world to affirm you. That's a fact. You know, um, I, I had a conversation with, with, with Ace Hood um, during, our, during our, uh, our episode of No Sleeping in the Trophy Room. And yeah. um, he was kind of preaching the same thing as far as just, yeah. you know. He's not, on that, too. Yeah. He's, just definitely, not, he's definitely on that. I, I love it. Um, but, yeah, while well, we're talking about that, I got one last tweet. Uh, that I want to read to you. <laughs> uh, tweets is watching right here. No sleeping in the trophy room live with David Weeks NYC. Make some noise. So this is a tweet. Uh, January 3rd, 2018. You were in Medellin, Colombia. I was there. Oh, God. David Weeks NYC. <laughs> it was 5 a.m. And you tweeted, appreciate geniuses while they're here. Oh, yeah. Damn. So... You know, I did write that. <laughs> we we just uh, witnessed the loss of Virgil Abloh yeah, uh, last Virgil, week. Man. Rest in peace, Virgil Abloh. I know that's somebody who you were hugely inspired by. Yeah, yeah, for um, sure. T- talk to me about you know th- this tweet right here and why it is so uh, important to appreciate I geniuses where while that they're spark, here. I think that was sparked from Tyler, the creator. Like uh, he's a genius. If people don't know that, like it's not just his raps. It's not the man is a genius, and I I give everybody their flowers. Why they here? Like that guy David Sebastian I just heard. He's mm-hmm. a genius. Like I tell everyone that even if you've never heard of him before, that man is a genius. And if you haven't heard him, you will very very soon. Like you know, you gotta give those flowers. So I just think Tyler is a genius, and I think I was also with Jay Balvin the day before. <laughs> no flex, Word. but uh, I was, yeah, I was, Balvin. I was, and I was like, man, this guy came from the slums. And he is just like a creative genius, and his people love him. I was like, this is nuts. Yo, I got to appreciate this. You know, I really did appreciate him showing me mad love out in Colombia and all that. So I was like, yeah, this is cool. And, you know, I just wanted to appreciate him more, appreciate Tyler, appreciate everyone who's really doing it while they're here. I don't want you to name a street after me after I die. It's like, oh, gee, thanks. I can't read the shit. Like, I want to, t- <laughs> I want to turn right on David Weeks Lane. Like, like, yeah. straight up. Like, yeah. I want to, sure. Like, you know, straight up. Make sure, like, I, right, I'm turning right on my my street. Don't give me a street when I die. It's not gonna do me any good. I don't want to. I don't care about that. I need my flowers now. Straight up. If you can't I, I, give them to me, then I'll give them to myself. <laughs> hello. You know? No, that's that's a big gem, you know? Um, I think that's just very important, you know? It's very important to show love in real time because uh, we don't know if there's going to be a next time. That's a fact. At, in this day and age. That's you know, a like fact. Dave said earlier, you know, you got wild stuff happening all over the place, man. Yeah. So um, show that love if you can, when you can. So, Dave, we have a segment on the show called Power Plays, right? Power Plays. Um, so I want to know... What is some advice that you would give to our viewers at home that are going to watch this, you know, to anybody who's going to watch this that's, that's inspired by your work that, you know, wants to be, you know, the next David Weeks NYC, man. Hey, man. You know, what, <laughs> what, what is some advice that you could give to somebody? Uh, advice. I'm terrible at advice. I just tell people just keep working. That's my thing. Keep working. Eventually, you know, you keep kicking out the door, right? If you keep kicking, 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 kicking. Eventually, that shit's going to break. Like, no matter how weak you are, uh, if it take a thousand kicks, if it take a million kicks, it's going to kick. So kick at that door, that that door that you want, kick at it. And I swear to go through. It'll work. Like, I, it worked for me. I swear. I like, it worked. And then I went down. And then I went up. And it worked again. Like yeah. So I, I just keep kicking at it. That's it. Like, all you got to do is just whatever you really want, like, just keep trying. There's no difference from you. It's just, uh, and other people who are successful, they just didn't quit. Straight up. Just keep kicking. Straight up. Just keep kicking. That's it. You're good. And, and, and it's crazy because a lot of people think that, you know, success is just is uh, a, straight, a straight line up. <laughs> success but, is a roller coaster. Right. <laughs> like, it's insane. We're going all over with yeah, it. Yeah, bro. I like always tell people, I got kicked off a mountain. I had to climb that shit back up. 
Literally, kick in my chest. Leonidas is <laughs> down 300. <laughs> oh, I fell. Pick. Climb that motherfucker back up. You know what I'm saying? Pray to God. Climb. Keep climbing. Pray to God again. Keep climbing. Climbing. Mm -hmm. You'll get back up. Straight up. You'll get back up. I love that, man. Very powerful message. Um, and lastly, yo, Dave, man, before we get out of here, champion's mantra. We usually close out these interviews on No Sleeping in the Trophy Room with your champion's mantra. What is, is there a ritual? Is there a phrase? Is there a saying? Mm -hmm. Something that you live by that, you know, that reminds you when you wake up in the morning, like, man, there is no sleeping in that trophy room. Nah, that's a fact. Um, I always just thank God as soon as I get up, first of all. <laughs> Amen. You know what I'm saying? As soon as I wake up. First like, one. No, I, I'm sick. Like, I know people say that shit, but I wake up like, oh, shit, I did it again. What the fuck? <laughs> this is amazing. So uh, thank God for that right off the rip. And then, like, you know, I live by, but it's not for me. I live by it's for other people. I say, you can do it too. You know, Pharrell told me that shit in 2006, and I swear to God, that changed my life. Like, and I want everybody to know that. You can do it too. This is not an accident while I'm here. Like, you know, I, it happened because you can do it also. Everyone can do this. Everyone. We're all humans. We all got 24 hours. I don't want, want to hear about this and that. Just, just work at it. And however long it takes, it takes. And it, however many ups and downs it takes, it takes. But you can do it too. You'll get there. You will get where you want to if you keep trying. Yeah. Persistence, baby. Yeah. And you could do it too. Yo, yeah. Dave, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to share your story Come on, right man. here. No sleeping in the trophy room yes, live. Sir. Hey, yo, um, I'm going to stand up real quick, real quick. But I want to thank everybody in this room for coming out tonight, for showing love, for showing support. This yeah. is what it's all about. You know, this is what it looks like. We're going to make some noise for David Weeks NYC. Yes, sir. Can we make some noise for me real quick? Is that cool? Hey. All right, all right. Make some noise for yourselves. Let's go, baby.